last time on Project Heat. Yeah, let's wait just for that. We're not gonna take that one yet. Huh? That's gonna be the last one we take that one. shift gears a little bit on this uh, project and start focusing on some of the metal work we got to do for the uh, empennage. Um, one of those things is the uh, hinges between the uh, elevator and the rudder uh, and the uh, horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. So uh, the original plans have uh, homemade uh, hinges and I've seen all kinds of different ways of doing it. People uh, have come up with some very creative solutions. Um, there are some you can buy out there. Um, one of the problems a lot of people have is it's kind of hard to manufacture a hinge of that size and be of any strength. So I, I wanted to keep this as much as I can, um, not being purchased, but me being me building it. And uh, this is more about the journey of the of the construction. It really, is about getting uh, to a destination. So I wanted to at least try building my own hinges first before uh, I decided to go along the road of buying them. I've seen some that have been uh, poured aluminum that that look pretty good. Uh, but if I can stick to the original plans at least as much as possible and, and try and build myself, I'm going to. So uh, with that being said, uh, I purchased some 4130 steel, some 13 gauge 4130 steel. And uh, I took it to um, uh, a different shop and used a brake to cut some pieces because they're, they're really small pieces and I didn't want to spend half my time grinding away uh, all of the uh, metal after I'd make some really sloppy cuts. So uh, the brake worked really good uh, and we got a whole bunch of little small pieces cut. Uh, so that we can practice with. Uh, I found a design. I found a design on uh, the Broadhead Beam Pole Association. Somebody made up uh, to uh, how they were able to make uh, some hinges by uh, kind of making a larger hinge, hinge and cutting it down. And they found that that structurally uh, worked a lot better. So I'm going to try that. I, I thought they put their plans up online and uh, it looked like a really good idea. So that's what I'm going to go uh, go ahead and try and do and see if they work. So we got lots of metal to practice with. If, uh, if it doesn't work. And maybe we'll go on the route of purchasing, but I'm going to at least try this route and uh, see how it goes. So.
A magnet works really well for holding everything in place with these small pieces, but uh, it also attracts the welding rod really bad. And it's hard to <laughs> hold the welding rod in place and get a puddle going because it keeps trying to stick to the metal from the magnetization. So it does a really good job of holding it in place, but it's kind of tricky with uh, also with the welding rod. I think I got a pretty good tack so I can get rid of it though. Step up that tip. I don't know if that tip's big enough. This piece of cinder I'm working on is about to crack and break off. I can see a big crack forming on it. No, if you stay over there, this is really hot. It's on this, and if it falls off and touches, it'll burn. So I don't want you to come here, okay? Is that one already? Is that one still hot? Do you have to quit you? Well, let me show you. I mean, it's, it needs to be cleaned up, but the way it works. So this is the female end to the male end. See there? Mm -hmm. And you put a pin in it. That's a basic concept. But this is wide enough for three of them. You cut, you can cut this in two cuts to make three hinges. You get three little hinges. Cool, huh? That probably won't take a long time to make this one. No, hopefully not. Get out, get out of here! Get! It's still not the prettiest weld I've ever done, uh, but that tip works better. I switched out tips. Uh, this is a slightly bigger tip than when I started with. This is a number one, uh, and it's definitely helping penetrate that uh, angle uh, steel better. Uh, still not the prettiest weld I've ever made. Uh, I'm going to grind it off and see how it looks underneath some of all that gunk I got all over it and see if it's any good. Uh, but it's definitely doing a better job than that other tip. That other tip was too small. I couldn't handle that size metal. So. Well, we were out here at the hangar working on our uh, 170. It is uh, neck deep in the annual right now, and uh, we're rocking and rolling on that. It uh, is taking, unfortunately, a, a lot of our focus off of the peat and pole, and that's why some of our videos have been a little bit slower. Um, it's like anything in aviation. When it comes to time, double it. When it comes to money, double it, triple it, quadruple it. Um, but we're getting we're getting progress done. We're getting uh, getting close to being wrapped up here. So um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back to uh, focusing on the Pete and Bull uh, uh, here real shortly. We've been getting some things done on it uh, here and there when we have the time. 
the priority has been to the 170 here, so we can get it all wrapped up and have a uh, flying family aircraft again. So uh, it's still very early in the morning here. Uh, the sun is not even close to coming out yet. It's really about the only time we can come out here and work. Uh, but it is uh, kind of a, with the exception of the trains going by, uh, uh, very relaxing out here. Everything is very quiet. And it's actually a very enjoyable time to, uh, to get some work done. So hopefully we'll have this wrapped up soon and we'll be back to full focus on the people. So after working on these hinges for a couple of weeks, we have uh, come up with a couple of different uh, options here. Uh, so this was our first three, and uh, our very first one, it didn't work. It turned out bad. We, uh, we tried to drill our hinge pull hole uh, on a drill press, and we missed the center mark, and it's, it's no good. So we learned a lot on that one. So then we came up with a new jig uh, to hold it, and our next two came out really well. Uh, and function-wise, they work really well. Um, so I was really happy with those. Uh, they take a long time to make, however. Um, but the one thing that we discovered as we were making these is what I did was I welded uh, a T in here. Uh, in terms of uh, functionality, it works really well, but the one thing I'm starting to be kind of concerned with is on the female side, it's two L's. So both sides are mounted to the to the uh, empennage. So this here really is just a spacer. It doesn't actually provide any uh, uh, real structural strength to it. Whereas on this side, on the middle end, uh, any kind of fatigue or any kind of stress is coming on that weld right there, which uh, gives me a little bit of concern um, that if something's gonna crack, it's gonna crack there. And this is just a plate that's held in place. It's not, there's no real support there. So um, our first three we built like that. The next set that we started to build um, I changed it up a little bit. Instead of welding one on there to make a T, I bent a 90 here and then welded a tab onto this side um, so that at least one side of it is actually screwed onto uh, either the rudder or the, the uh, stabilizer, whichever one, um, so that there's always, no matter which part of the hinge, has always got something structurally that is, that is being supported. Um, and the big fatigue point is here, really, so that if it were to crack, if the weld were to crack, um, it wouldn't depart the aircraft, uh, is kind of the idea. So these are just some simple um, 3 16 pins I put in there to, to hold them in place so I could uh, make sure they worked all right. So after several weeks of work, um, this is everything that we have produced. <laughs> it's been a slow project, uh, and it's been quite a bit of work. Um, but we've, now that we've kind of figured out what we're doing, hopefully we can make them uh, a little bit faster. So uh, the boys have been a little bit bored, haven't you? 
there's not not been a whole lot for them to do uh, on this part because it's just, uh, it's kind of small metal work with uh, with uh, some of the power tools that they can't use yet. So they've been a little bit bored, but uh, we're ordering up the horizontal stabilizer kit. It should be here hopefully before too long, and uh, they'll get to be more involved in this. So uh, that's where we're at so far. Join us next time for another episode of Project Heat.